in this video, we just want to try to provide a very a brief introduction into conjugation and aromaticity. Um, let's start off with by considering this situation. Here we have cyclohexene, and we are going to reduce this double bond into a single bond by hydrogizing it. Now, to do that, that means that we would have to break the pi bond. It takes about 80 kilocalories to do that. But then when that pi bond is broken between these two carbon atoms, we form the two sigma bonds, one with each hydrogen atom. These, of course, are very strong bonds. So overall, when we hydrogenate this, energy is released. Or maybe it's more helpful to think of it in the other situation. If we go from this saturated cyclohexane molecule to a situation where we have one double bond in the ring by eliminating these sigma bonds, it would take 120 kilocalories of joules to go in this direction. So this molecule that has a single double bond in it is has more chemical energy than the saturated form. Again, going from here to here would require plus 120 kilojoules per mole. So this is more energetic, so to speak, than this molecule. Now, if we go from a situation where we have a saturated molecule, and now we're going to put in not one double bond, but two double bonds. Or let's think of going, first of all, in the other direction. Here we have two double bonds, hydrogenate. So now we're going to break both these pi bonds, and then we're going to have four new carbon-hydrogen sigma bonds that have been formed. When we do that, 232 kilojoules of energy are released for each mole. Or if we go from here, no double bonds, to where we have two double bonds going in the opposite direction, then we would have to add 232 kilojoules to go to this more energetic form. Now let's compare that to this figure up here. If we go from here to where there's a single double bond, that would require 120 kilojoules. Now what if we go from here to where there are two double bonds in the molecule? You would think that would require 240 kilojoules. But in fact, to go from here to here requires only 232 kilojoules, 8 kilojoules less than what we would have predicted based upon what happened up here. And notice we not only put two double bonds into the molecule going from here to here, but these double bonds are separated by a single bond. That's conjugation. And we see that when we have this conjugated system, it's a little bit more stable than what we had anticipated. Again, we would have thought that going from here, from here, no double bonds, to where there's two double bonds, would take 240 kilojoules, twice what it would when we're going to form only a single double bond in our system. But in fact, it only takes 232 kilojoules to go in this direction. So this is stabilized by 8 kilojoules. And again, it's this conjugation effect that we'll talk about more in a few moments. But when you have double bonds separated by a single bond, you have that conjugation effect. And there is a little bit of stability that um, is lent to the system on account of that. Now, if we went from here to a molecule that has three double bonds in it, 
going in that direction, we would expect that it would take 360 kilojoules. Here, let's get this out of the way. Here is the benzene molecule now with three double bonds. Here is the unsaturated cyclohexane molecule. If we go in this direction, like this, that requires 208 kilojoules for each mole. But again, going back to here, we would have predicted if going from here to where there's a single double bond would require plus 120 kilojoules, then to have three double bonds we think would require 360 kilojoules to go from here to here. But in fact, it only requires 208 kilojoules. So this molecule we can think of as more energetic than this one because it takes energy to go from here to here, but the amount of energy that is required to take that step is substantially less than what we would have had anticipated based upon when we were going from here to here forming only a single double bond in the molecule. So here when we have a system then of conjugated bonds in a cyclic form, it is very, very stable, much more than what we would have predicted, again, based upon our earlier data from here. Now, this is when we have then a conjugated system in a cyclic form. What happens if it's just a linear molecule? say like this. Here we have six carbon molecules and then we have three double bonds, a single bond in between, and then here we have just the saturated form of the six carbon atoms. Well if we go from here to here, that requires 337 kilojoules per mole. Now again, going back to here, when we're forming just a, from the saturated system to just a single double bond, we would anticipate 360 kilojoules. Instead, it only requires 337 kilojoules. So there is some stabilization from having these double bonds interspersed with single bonds in between in this linear molecule. But the amount of stabilization is not nearly as large as when we had them in a cyclic form. To go from here, no double bonds, completely saturated, to here with three double bonds requires 208 kilojoules as opposed to 360 here, it takes 337 as opposed to 360. So there's some stabilization, but not nearly as strong as when the conjugated molecules are in a circular form or we have a cyclic system as opposed to an open-ended molecule. So why is this so? And we're not going to get into a lot of theory here, but when we have them in a cyclic system, like this, where we have alternating double bonds and single bonds, we have sp2 hybridized carbon atoms. They're all in a plane and 
they all have the p orbitals perpendicular to this plane, and they all have overlapping p orbitals, as we've been talking about ever since um, video number three. So what we have then is a very strong delocalized system for the uh, pi orbital electrons, where you have a whole cloud of them, both above the ring and below the ring. We're not going to try to draw the picture. You can probably find much better illustrations in your textbook. But for right now, in our introduction, just to point out a couple of things then, that to have the strong system of um, stabilization, we're dealing with sp2 hybridized atoms here. They're all in a plane and the p orbitals are perpendicular to the plane and we can form other systems that are, have this strong resonance. Um, we have this abnormally or powerful resonance, we call it uh, aromaticity. As you'll see in the other videos, we can have other systems like this too besides benzene and in each case the number of pi electrons that are delocalized follows this Hickel's rule, 4n plus 2. So the number of pi electrons that are being delocalized can be 2, 6, 10, and so forth. And what makes these numbers so important, um, again, we're not going to get into a lot of theory in this video, but it is because of the molecular orbitals. When you form the molecular orbitals, the bonding orbitals, you always form some anti-bonding orbitals. When you have this many number of electrons involved, the electrons, the final electrons that are placed are being placed into bonding orbitals instead of anti-bonding orbitals. And again, we can discuss this in more detail um, in uh, future videos. For right now, we just want to sort of outline the basics here of what is involved with aromaticity. And again, just to try to uh, provide some numbers so we sort of had a handle as to how strong this aromatic system is. And then if we just try to draw Lewis structures, as we've done in the previous videos for the benzene ring, it's just very simple. It would just be like this. But we want to focus on in the next two videos is this. What happens then if we attach a molecule to the benzene ring? And the molecule that we are attaching might have a lone pair of p electron, uh, pi orbital electrons. How would these interact with this electron cloud above and below the benzene ring? How would it affect it? Or perhaps we attach um, a molecule to the benzene ring, and it has an empty p orbital would that accept electrons from the benzene ring? And those are the types of things that we will look at in the next two videos. So come back, join us for those. We will learn about electron releasing molecules, how they affect the benzene ring, and also electron absorbing molecules, and how they affect the electron distribution of the benzene ring. And that'll be it then for this video. Um, a reminder that the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org.